Hello everyone. Uh, I hope you can uh, see me and uh, also see my screen. So, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jana Gustafsson and I have worked with the ground penetrating radar measurements since 1993. So hopefully I can share the fun of the GPR technique with you today. Uh, today's webinar will be about the GPR method. What is GPR? What is needed to carry out an investigation? What do you gather for type of data and how do you gather it? Uh, we will also look at some of the most common application, utilities, bedrock, roads, concrete, and finally ice and snow. So what is GPR? Ground penetrating radar. This is one of our tools in our geophysical toolbox. And geophysics, what's that? Geophysics is all about measuring physical parameters of the ground as, for instance, conductivity, resistivity and density. These parameters will, for instance, say something on how good the ground transfer uh, electrical current or uh, how fast the sound wave can travel in bedrock, which again tell us something about the ground conditions and the quality of the ground. So what is GPR? This is a technique that employs high frequency pulsed radio waves, usually between 10 to 4,000 megahertz to acquire subsurface information as from metallic, non-metallic structures, features, layers buried in the ground or in man-made constructions. A ground penetrating radar emits these radio waves into the soil or constructions rather than into the air as a ordinary radio does and works almost like a fish finder or an echolocation device on a boat. When the emitted signal encounters a buried object or a boundary that has an abrupt change in the electrical properties, some or all of the radar energy will be reflected back towards the surface, while the remaining signal travels deeper to be reflected off the next object or boundary. So what do you need to carry out a GPR investigation? The standard components in a GPR system are, independently of who has built the equipment, these three parts, uh, the data logger, the control unit, and the antenna. Uh, you need a data logger or a monitor PC, a tablet, to set up the system and also view and store data. Uh, the control unit, that is the brain of the system, uh, which makes sure that the antennas collects the data in the correct manner. And it also helps to get the data from the antennas to the logger. And finally, you need an antenna. Uh, the antenna both transmits and receives electromagnetic signals. So uh, <clears throat> this can be one antenna element doing the both, both transmitting and receiving, or it can be two antenna elements in one single box, one transmitter and one receiver. So these are the three main parts of a GPR system. And what do we actually measure with ground penetrating radar? GPR measures traces, or also called scans. One trace or scan is a single measurement point from the ground surface and downwards. And this trace scan represents the amplitude of the reflection when this GPR wave hits a layer or an object. In the image to the right, you see a GPR antenna with uh, one transmitter and one receiver antenna. Uh, these are placed in one box on top of the ground. Uh, and when the uh, electromagnetic pulse is emitted from the transmitter antenna, the first reflection that will receive the receiving antenna will be the signal traveling through the air directly from the transmitter to the receiver. This is called the direct wave. 
This happens because the transmitted radio wave will travel faster through air than through soil. Uh, this will also create a quite strong reflection uh, as the signal travels directly between the antennas without being affected by any obstacles. Uh, so this can uh, <coughs> be seen in the trace in the trace view, which we are building uh, on the left hand side of the uh, of the ground. Uh, this is where our radar trace is created. So you see the strong reflections both to, to left and right on the red line. Uh, but the radar signal continues uh, going deeper down. Uh, and then the signal hits the buried object in the soil and thereby creating a second reflection that will arrive to the receiver antenna a bit later. Uh, this uh, reflected pulse is not as strong as the direct wave as it has traveled through the soil and lost, lost some of its power. In the trace window, you can see the reflection from the buried object being recorded further down on the trace. And when we have collected all the, the back reflections, our trace is uh, ready. So then this radar trace is then converted to an image where the positive and negative amplitudes, the wiggling, uh, are visualized as black and white colors in a grayscale image, like this. Uh, so now you can see the, the amplitude of the trace uh, transformed to a grayscale instead. And when lots of lots of these radar traces are collected closely, closely, by side by side, a radar reflection profile will be created. And this is our radiogram, the result of the uh, radar measurement. So much of GPR investigation are actually about pulling or pushing GPR antennas along the ground to gather these uh, traces to form radiograms, the resulting GPR picture. And as said, the radiogram is the result of the ground penetrating radar investigation. We have the amplitude of the reflection for the ground expressed in a grayscale. Uh, but what more can we actually see in a radiogram? Uh, you can see point objects as so-called hyperbolas looking like an upside down U. And you can see planar reflectors uh, from different surfaces or layers in the ground. Uh, you can also look at the structure of the ray radiogram to distinguish between, for instance, a homogeneous sand um, and a more tilly ground with stones and boulders. So in the example, we have a radiogram on the top. It's quite even uh, in grayscale. So this is sandy conditions with the uh, some utilities or objects forming these nice point reflectors, the hyperbolas. Uh, and then in the radiogram below, it's more heterogeneous conditions. We have a till with uh, plenty of stones and boulders creating this messy picture. Uh, but still we have nice layers as well uh, for a um, layered sand on top of a till. So why do point objects turn up like a upside down smiley, um, these use the hyperbolas? Um, this is due to the fact that this electromagnetical pulse uh, we are uh, sending from the transmitter antenna doesn't go straight down. Uh, it's actually looking more like a cone. So you feel and see objects before and after you actually are above them. Uh, this is often referred to as the antenna footprint. How is our cone of uh, electromagnetic waves looking like? And this will mean that point objects in the soil won't look like points, but they will look like hyperbolas. We can look at this uh, small animation.
So in this example, we have two soil layers and a point object situated in the upper, upper layer. As the image shows, the boundary between the two layers will, is clearly visible throughout the radar profile, except directly below the point object, where we have a, a bit less energy reaching this interface uh, and thus uh, producing a weaker reflection. And the point object has the typical hyperbol hyperbolic shape, the upside down smiley. Uh, depending on the antenna frequency you use, as I said before, the range is from like 10 megahertz to 4000 megahertz for ground penetrating radar antennas. Uh, both the resolution and the depth of your GPR investigation will vary. High frequency antennas has a small wavelength uh, and see small details, but not that deep in the ground. And uh, low frequency antennas has really huge wavelength. So they can see deep, but cannot detect smaller objects or thinner layers. In the example you see on the screen, uh, we have a top radiogram measured with an 800 megahertz antenna, revealing small heating pipes in the surface. You see them as this layer of small, small hyperbolas. Uh, and then the bottom radiogram is measured at the same spot with a 250 megahertz antenna, revealing boulders and layers down to three, four, five meters depth. But this frequency is, however, too um, low, so the small heating pipes are totally invisible. Uh, and as you can see on the right hand side, the antennas vary also in size. Uh, this is due to the fact that the antenna element needs to have a physical size to create the correct wavelength. Large wavelength need big, bigger antenna elements, so low frequency antennas are bigger than high frequency antennas. Um, as a consequence of this uh, cone shape transmission pattern of the radio signal we talked about earlier, deep lying objects also needs to be larger in diameter than shallow objects in order to be seen with the ground penetrating radar. If you want to make a quick estimation uh, as whether an object at a specific depth will be visible with GPR, you can use the so-called 10% rule. This states that the size of the target needs to be at least 10% of the survey depth in order to be visible. So if you would have an object at a depth of 10 meters, it would need to be roughly one meter in uh, diameter to be seen with the uh, ground penetrating radar. Uh, just as a just as an example uh, to show the range of size and depth for uh, GPR investigation, depending on the antenna frequency you use. Um, I show this table. As you can see, uh, down on the left side, we have a high frequency antenna, and we can really see small, small objects down to maybe five millimeters in diameter with these high frequency antennas. And again, if we go up to the right, we go down in frequency, but we also go up in, in the depth of the investigation. So with the low frequency antenna, we can actually measure 35 to 60 meters below the ground surface. Uh, and this also means that uh, the combination of different antenna frequencies is uh, sometimes really good. Uh, sometimes you want to see both deep and in detail. So then you can do measurement at the, the same time or after each other with two different frequencies to both get the high resolution on top and the uh, nice deep data. But what will affect your GPR investigation? Will GPR always work out well or not? Uh, first and foremost, it is the conductivity of the ground that will affect your uh, GPR data most. 
And what is the conductivity? Yes, that tells you how well the ground or construction leads an electrical current. Uh, <clears throat> if this ability is too high, the radar wave is prevented and completely suppressed. This means that no uh, GPR waves will travel downwards, so no information of the subsurface condition are coming up uh, either. So typical conductive environments are clay, silt, salt, and contaminations of uh, different types. Uh, do you still need to investigate your ground? Of course you do. Uh, so you could try resistivity instead or seismics. Uh, these are other nice uh, geophysical tools, which we cover in other webinars found at our YouTube page. Uh, it can also be good to know that you can measure um, Uh, that you can measure GPR both in 2D uh, as a single line, but also in 3D, where you collect several profiles at the same time. Uh, so instead of having just one transmitter and receiver in one box, you have a big GPR antenna box that contains several transmitter and receiver antennas compared to the 2D equipment. And then you can uh, collect several parallel profiles of data at the same time. And this, of course, gives a difference in detail in the results. Uh, the 3D investigation uh, gives a more or less aerial photo of the ground conditions at different depths below the ground surface. So 3D arrays, really, really good for complicated uh, situations and 2D radar for um, maybe bedrock and uh, not that complicated utility situations. How you work out in the field depends on, uh, on your application. Uh, the GPR antennas are most often uh, really robust and rough uh, and you have to bring them along uh, in a way that makes your field work as easy as possible. Uh, so, uh, of course, you can pull them by hand, uh, but you can also have them behind the boats or different types of vehicles. Uh, you can also place them in different carts and push them along your investigation profile. So, um, depending on the application and the system you use, Make sure that you bring the, the equipment along in the field in a nice and easy way. Okay, so let's start to look at some applications. Uh, we start with the utilities first, as this is the most common use of GPR. Uh, when working to map utilities, you most often work in parallel profiles. So when indication fall in a line, more or less straight, you know that this is the utility, the long line of objects and not the single object as a stone. Uh, so you can see uh, uh, in the map pictures, you have like a baseline in, in red and then the, the black thin lines uh, correspond to the investigated GPR profiles. Um, so for the top, top example, it's really nice uh, ground conditions. We have this sandy soil with clear hyperbolas. And in the resulting picture, we have these five parallel GPR lines where we can map four different utility lines. So uh, we have one blue utility, uh, two red ones and a green one. So this is the way you work to see that, okay, one object here and one here falls in a line that must be a long object. Uh, but uh, the ground conditions vary, so we don't always work in sand. Uh, in, the, uh, in the bottom example, the investigation were made in a more uh, tilly ground. So here the hyperbolas represent both utilities 
and also stones in the in the till. Um, so here it's even more important to actually work in quite dense parallel profiles to be able to distinguish what what's a utility and what is a single stone. Um, and in the result, you can see that, okay, we have some utility lines, but we also have single objects, which are not connected. Uh, and if this picture is really complicated, that you have uh, several utilities at several depth or even bending and going round, then the use a, of a 3D array system is uh, really, really good. Um, this was a case that started uh, with a person living close by having severe headaches. Uh, the construction of the housing area claimed that nothing dangerous was left behind uh, when they were building these houses. Uh, the houses were built on a former industrial site, but the constructor claimed that, okay, but we have cleaned it. We don't, uh, there's nothing in the ground that can cause this uh, headache. Um, I did a quite fast GPR investigation at the site uh, and easily this uh, barrel uh, was uh, spotted in the GPR data and uh, when they dug at that site, yes, you can see the result on, on the left hand side, a huge barrel uh, leaking quite unhealthy material. Um, so what you see on the right hand side is the, a top view meaning that I have done several parallel profiles, created a 3D volume, and then you can look at it from top and downwards, like a time slice. So the black spot is uh, the top of the barrel. And then you also have uh, this traditional 2D radiogram, our result, uh, where you can see the oil barrel as a layer, quite short layer uh, at one meter depth. That's the a bit more black and white, yeah, short layer seen on the left hand side in the radiogram. Uh, another common application is bedrock. Uh, and what you want to know uh, most often is is the bedrock present at what depth? And uh, this is typically used prior building of roads, railroads, or for example, a new piping system for water or sewage. Uh, the purpose of this project was to ground a high voltage cable. So uh, for this, it was really important to find the spots with shallow bedrock. Uh, in these spots, blasting of the bedrock was needed prior to the construction of the cable. Uh, and this is information you really want to have before you start the construction. So GPR investigation were carried out together with your technical drillings. Um, so what we see is the radiogram on top uh, and the, yeah, just a picture without the radiogram as well. So the green vertical lines are the geotechnical drillings down to bedrock. And then the black and green line uh, represent the interpretation of the ground penetrating radar. Uh, so, the combination of these two methods give a really excellent picture of uh, the bedrock levels along the investigated profile. Uh, in this case, the aim was to map uh, also the bed to the bedrock, uh, but to see if the ground was suitable for groundwater extraction and where to uh, locate the wells. Uh, groundwater wells is best to locate in the areas where you have uh, the, the greatest depth to the bedrock and not in the shallow parts. Uh, so GPR data was interpreted and the result uh, was presented as a simple color scale uh, in Google Earth. The picture on the right, uh, you have the color scale from red to blue uh, where the red areas represent areas where the bedrock was found at really shallow depth uh, from zero to six meters. Uh, and then the blue areas um, where bedrock was found at greater depth from uh, nine to 15 meters uh, more or less. So um, 
yes, the um, the community who needed the wells, they went for the blue areas for uh, placing their groundwater wells. So let's move on to roads. Uh, roads are investigated with GPR to get a grip of the road construction. The layer thicknesses uh, from asphalt layers to the com complete road, but also what you actually can find underneath the road in form of geology. Okay, the first example is from a measurement made with two antenna frequencies at the same time. Uh, both uh, GPR antennas are pulled in a cart behind a car. Uh, the high frequency antenna, the yellow one, uh, it's uh, a 2.3 gigahertz antenna, is seen between the wheels. Uh, and this was used for the asphalt and the reinforcement layer below the asphalt. So these two layers are represented by the topmost brown colors uh, in the uh, in the presentation. Um, the lower frequency antenna, uh, it was an 800 megahertz antenna. Uh, you can see the gray box in front of the wheels on the road cart uh, was used for the rest of the layers in the road, shown as blue, purple, and green interpretation in, uh, on top of the radiogram. Uh, and uh, note the length of the profile, uh, 2,000 meters of data revealing the road conditions. Uh, and 2,000 meters when working on roads is uh, actually quite short. Um, more or less often your, uh, your data files can be 10, 15, 20 kilometers long. Uh, this case shows more or less just asphalt but in uh, several layers. Um, this, this was a new road, but it collapsed, in, as you can see in the mid part of the radiogram, where we have this pit. Uh, and they have to refill with asphalt on several occasions. Um, and um, yeah, when we did the measurement, this pit was filled with 40, 50 centimeters of, of asphalt. Uh, getting expensive, so it's good to, to, to have the um, GPR to reveal areas where the bearing capacity of the road is, uh, is lacking. Um, and if you don't have any road cart, as shown in the previous example, you can actually attach the, uh, a high frequency antenna below the car with help of your car door in an easy way. Okay, from roads to concrete constructions, EPR is really excellent in revealing what's inside a, a building. Uh, in this case, a concrete floor was investigated uh, and the ground penetrating radar showed clearly one part of the floor with plenty of hyperbolas. You can all see them as uh, an undulating layer. Um, this represents a uh, rebar mat not even, but a bit undulating. And below that uh, rebar mat, you can also see the bottom of uh, the concrete. And then suddenly the hyperbolas disappear. Okay, the floor is not reinforced anymore, uh, but instead you can see that the concrete is thicker. So uh, yeah, this is seen on the right-hand side of the radiogram. EPR was also used to map the rebars in a bridge construction. Uh, this investigation was needed prior a maintenance work to avoid uh, and not harm the larger rebars carrying most of the weight of this uh, bridge construction. So um, measurements were done in two directions. Uh, all these single 2D lines were put together in a 3D volume, and then we go from top and uh, deeper down to see how the rebar actually are situated in the construction. So the red ones are the uh, larger rebars we want to avoid. And then we below that have a net of uh, more fine, fine rebars. 
Um, ground penetrating radar is also a standard method uh, for historical investigations in many countries around the world. Uh, our first example is from uh, Norway, where a 3D array measurements were made on a huge field in southern Norway. And the result revealed a large whitened ship just below the ground surface, but still invisible without the 3D array radar. Uh, and as you can see, there's a, a picture of uh, how they think the, the Viking ship looked like, and also the result of the 3D array. It's uh, like a photograph uh, of, uh, of the ground, uh, the Viking ship in a nice round circle. The next historical site is Karnatum. Uh, this is a gladiator base camp in Austria. Uh, and here GPR results uh, are more like an aerial photo of the, these old buildings. Uh, you should also note the depth. It's uh, 1.6 meters down in the ground. And uh, yes, the building remains are uh, more or less crystal clear showing all the walls and different rooms in this uh, base camp. Uh, and finally, ice and snow. And uh, this is actually where it all started in the 20s uh, with the ground penetrating radar development. Ice and snow are extremely clean GPR environments. Here you have the ability to measure deep. Uh, as you remember, we talked about 35 to 60 meters in ground. In ice, this would be hundreds and hundreds of meters. But let's start with thin ice. Uh, here, measurements have been done uh, on lake ice to map the ice thickness. This is really important at this car testing site to check the ice conditions before letting the expensive fancy cars out for test drive. Uh, measurements can be done uh, by having the GPR antenna after a snowmobile or maybe a uh, <coughs> not that expensive car uh, to pull the antennas on the lake ice to use. And if you go a bit deeper, Ground penetrating radar is also used to map glaciers. Um, this is, for instance, done to see the effect of climate change. Uh, in the radiogram, we have three kilometers of data revealing ice thicknesses down to approximately 50 meters. And then we have the teal and bedrock below. Uh, so this give, give us the possibility to estimate the volumes of ice left and also to monitor the change from year to year. Okay, uh, time to conclude. Uh, and let's start with some points on the limitations of ground penetrating radar. First, uh, penetration depth and ability to locate targets at any depth is strongly dependent upon the local soil properties. As you remember, uh, I said that what's affecting GPR most is the conductivity. If you have clay, it might not work at all. So always check the conductivity of, of the ground before you start your ground penetrating radar investigation. And second, uh, you need to have this contrast between the target and the host material. So there need to be an electrical contrast between those two different materials. Otherwise, our radar wave will not bounce back. It will just continue, continue and continue and we don't get the back reflection, which is our result of the ground penetrating radar investigation. Uh, and third, interpretation of ground penetrating radar data can be quite subjective. So the experience of the interpreter is very important. I think that everybody can learn to use modern ground penetrating equipment in 15 minutes but to learn to interpret the data takes a bit longer. Uh, but now I think that we should concentrate on the positive sides of ground penetrating radar. It's non-destructive, 
it's really easily easy handled. As I said, you can most often learn to use the equipment in 15 minutes. Really fast data collection, highway speed, uh, which make it uh, cost efficient. Uh, compared to other geophysical investi investigation techniques, it's detailed, high resolution. You can see small details uh, in the ground or in the construction. Uh, we can also uh, distinguish metallic and non-metallic objects. It doesn't matter if it's a pipe of iron or plas plastic. Uh, and finally, gives the important information between traditional point-wise investigations. So, just as a final conclusion, uh, the applications of ground penetrating radar investigation is extensive. I guess it's only your imagination that sets the limit. So I just say, go out and measure and try. Uh, most often you will gain more knowledge than you had before your ground penetrating radar investigation. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, you can check out our webpage and also visit our YouTube page with plenty of uh, interesting webinars. <laughs>